There are a lot of things to take into consideration when you're designing your Hero Forge minis, and what sort of things you need to keep in mind kind of depend on what exactly you're doing with it. You may have seen my past videos with tips for when you're going to 3D print the mini at home, but let's say you're not into 3D printing and your focus is on painting the mini. Maybe this is even your first mini you're gonna be painting and you wanna make that process as easy as possible. Well, then you're gonna wanna stay tuned and get my tips for designing for easy painting in Hero Forge. That's right, this video is sponsored by Hero Forge. More on that later, but first, let's jump into the tips. Intro power, go! Hey, this is Jonathan, also known as the Mad Maker, also known as the producer over on the Mercs of Mischief channel. And I've got another set of design tips for you in Hero Forge. And this is, like I said, very focused on making it easier to paint. And I say that as someone who is not a great accomplished and practiced mini painter. So when I say easy, I mean easy for anyone to get started on. Now, my original concept for this video was to have a little bit of fun with my buddy, Skylar. If you watch my previous videos, you know that Skylar's character, Pen, came out particularly difficult to print. He did not follow my rules for easy 3D printing. To be fair, I hadn't come up with them yet. And my assumption that the hardest one to print was also gonna be one of the hardest ones to paint. And I was expecting to have a good laugh as he struggled through getting around all the different pieces and all the different gear that he applied to this thing. But, well, I mean, here's his reaction. Pretty much three hours later. Yeah, three hours. Uh, I don't know if that's like normal, I will say I am super pleased with the results. The eye staff I was super pleased with, the cloak, I'm actually really proud of that. I know it's just dotting, but it really, really pulled together uh, that look to me. Uh, the tome, obviously super pleased that I got that eye on there. The magic skull floating in his hand, that one came out a little rough. And I even got his hair in there. Overall, rousing success, in my opinion. I will say, it was therapeutic, it was a lot of fun. Therapeutic? A lot of fun? That's not what I was going for. And at first I thought that he was just saying like, oh yeah, it's because he's just trying to be positive for the video or whatever. But then actually watching him paint it, it didn't seem like there was any struggle. But then I was like, hold on a second. I haven't actually painted that many minis. Could it be possible that I was completely wrong? Maybe what I thought made a mini hard to paint wasn't quite accurate. Maybe the design elements that make something easy to print don't necessarily translate over. And I know there are people out there who have painted hundreds if not thousands more minis than I have who could probably just off the top of their head tell you everything that I'm about to. But all those people who I know were busy and any other ones I tried to reach out to haven't gotten back to me. So I figured I'd have to dig my hands in and get the data myself. Luckily, I have a whole bunch of different minis to paint. I didn't want to spend like 50 hours of painting time to make this video. So for these purposes, I'm just gonna do a little bit of blocking in and test some of my assumptions to see what makes a mini easier or harder to paint. So I started off with Guy and as I expected, this one was overall pretty easy to paint. Everything is more or less accessible. It was a little tricky getting under the coat there at the shoes, but for the most part, I've got a straight line to every feature on the mini with his wide open stance. I'm gonna start off strong by giving Guy an A for approachable. I feel like uh, someone like me who hasn't painted a bajillion minis and may not have the best brush control in the world is still gonna have no problem getting at all of these spots. A similar situation was minis like Darius. He's easy because once again, all of these inside spots are accessible. And those spots which are a little bit tighter are very small and even. So I'm just trying to get paint laid evenly across the shirt. If I wanna do the details on like the shirt buttons a different color, that would take a little bit more care. But for the most part, the object he's holding is away from his body far enough that I have no problem getting a direct line into wherever you'd go. So Darius gets a P for this one was planned better. It was actually the mini I designed in my designing for easy 3D printing. This doesn't mean definitively that everything that can print easily can paint easily and vice versa. More details on that later. Other ones that I found super easy to paint were the ones we did with your narrator. Uh, both of these were easy. They have very wide open stances. Everything can be reached super easy. And even this one with the giggle dog where he's got the base item that is kind of inside. And it's the sort of item that's just gonna be painted one consistent color so no real problems there so these guys get a G for 
guest stars are great to work with. Now moving slightly up further in the difficulty spectrum, we have Jobetta. Um, I only put her as slightly up because she's more or less similar to Darius, but the shield that she's holding is held tighter in on her body. Luckily, that tight inside area is small. So even if it is frustrating on that spot, um, you got two advantages there. Is one, it's not as many tiny details that you have to get at. And two, it's in a spot that's not easily seen unless someone's taken real close-up pictures or something. The most detailed part on this mini is the outside of the shield. That's really where you want to draw focus anyways with that cool design. And that's all very easy to reach. So even though those detailed designs take a little more patience and care, as long as they're on the outside and easily accessible, it's not really an issue. So Jabetta gets an O for, okay, no real problem. Along the same lines, we have Kithri. A lot of the same principles apply. She's very open stanced. Most of the details are easy to reach. Even the cape is up and away from the body, so the underside can be accessed really easily, even with the base attached. The one tricky part here is the books. Because this cape is kind of flowing above them, it cuts off some of the accessibility. So to get a couple of these angles, you have to go in low under the legs, and it's just a little bit trickier but still not that hard. So I'm gonna give Kithri a solid B for base item placement is important, but otherwise super easy. Now Lilith is another one of those that would have been very easy if I hadn't have gotten wild with this tail. I really wanted her as if she's holding the shield and blocking arrows from behind while focusing on firing to the front. I thought that was a real cool kind of scene. But even just painting the cape confirmed that getting inside to that shield was gonna be tough. It's a tight fit, especially when you want something like the handle on the shield to be a different color or even metallic. Uh, it's a little bit tighter to get in there on certain parts and is gonna be a bit more frustrating. Now, I think as long as you paint that part first and accept the fact that you might get a little bump here or there that you have to go back over with another color. Still, it's definitely doable. So overall, I'm gonna give Lilith a T for tails should be spaced a bit better, especially if they hold something. And now we get to the ones that I could tell right away were gonna be especially difficult to paint even before I started this, and I turned out to be right on those. The first I didn't think about quite as much because I didn't actually design this one, but Lucas was super tricky. Getting in between the sword and the body here is a very tight squeeze. And if you were just wearing something like solid plate armor or a regular shirt with no other real specific details on his chest, this wouldn't have been as big of a deal because you could just take that brush in there sideways and run it along the edge. But the chest on this guy is both overall kind of flat, but with several individual details that should really be painted to stand out to do it justice. I'm not totally confident that I have the skill to get in here, but I am gonna finish up all these minis eventually, and I'll post pictures over on our Discord. So join us over there if you wanna see them as they progress. But overall, I gotta give Lucas an F for full color printing or professional painting is really the way to go on something like this. That's right, full color printing is coming soon to Hero Forge. This video is sponsored by Hero Forge. There's no official public release date set yet, but the early access is available to those who support it on Kickstarter. And we were actually able to order up and receive our very own 3D printed full color mini Guy Bonton, the colorful rainbow warlock. It is really cool. The other option they're gonna have available is professional painting. So if you just wanna make someone else suffer through painting your monstrosity, you can pay for that privilege. But you don't have to wait for Hero Forge 2.0 to come out to get all kinds of cool new stuff from Hero Forge because they actually drop cool new stuff every Tuesday. They already have 38 fantasy races and thousands of items to choose from, and you can mix and match them all up and make horrible monstrosities. Or, you know, a perfect depiction of your character that you play at your tabletop game. But either way, if you weren't one of the Kickstarter backers, then you are gonna have to wait, and in the meantime, paint your own minis. So maybe hold off for now on making the super impossible to paint minis, and let's look at the rest of the analysis and final conclusions to make sure that your mini is paintable when you get it. So now we'll go to what I think I can say objectively is gonna be the most difficult to get a really good paint job of, and that is Rolda. Now from the front, she's got a very open stance, but as suspected, this space between the body, the tail, and the cape created a situation where I, man, I, 
uh, look, I followed this one through and went ahead and put the base coat down on the whole thing, but it's gonna be really tricky if I want to go in there and say like, highlight the ridges on the tail, because even getting a base coat down on this without getting the paint all over the other parts was an uphill battle and a real stretch of my skills. There was also kind of an issue just because she is so short and has a long skirt, getting up to the feet is a little bit tricky, but those are kind of close enough to the outside that you can just sort of reach with the tip of your brush. Not quite as much of an issue as trying to paint that tail. So as the most difficult one to paint of the bunch, I have to give Rilda an eye for I should have thought this through. Oh my God, why do I do this to myself? And so you may be wondering, what's the final verdict on Penn? Well, actually, and I was shocked by this, but when I really thought about it, it makes perfect sense. Penn was very easy to paint. He's got a very wide open stance. The details are spread out and everything's kind of just pointing off in different directions, which definitely makes this more difficult to support for 3D printing without adding 8 billion supports that are difficult to get off, but makes it a lot easier to paint. Every point on this model is accessible with a brush. The only real tight squeeze is this one spot between the cat and the pants. And even that's a very small area that you can just kind of dip into with the tip of your brush. So hey, I know when to admit when I'm wrong. Pen gets an A+. So after messing around with all of those, here are the main conclusions that I can draw and the main points you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind to make sure that your mini is easy to paint. First, remember that open stances are best. You really wanna think about being able to reach any point on the model with a brush. So even though you have all the options in the world to sort of contort and tighten up the position of your mini, if your goal is making it easy to paint, plan for something that's gonna look great with a nice open stance. Another one is keep important details accessible. And this can mean like in the case of Jibetta, having that one real ornate thing be the shield pointing outwards, or it can mean like pen, just spreading everything out and making sure there aren't any of those tight overlaps. And when you do get to painting, remember that if you can't highlight one little minor spot because it's too tight, it's no big deal. Ideally, something else on the mini is going to be the main thing your eye is drawn to anyways. So if the color's a little more flat at that point, meh. It's fine. And the third thing is be conscious about your base item placement. If you have something sort of hanging over or obstructing that base item, it's gonna be real difficult to get in there and get at the details. So either choose a base item that doesn't have as much detail or position it so that the details are gonna be accessible. Cause that's really the through line here is making sure that you have a straight line from the outside of the model into every important detail. So that's all I got for you today. I hope you find this helpful. If you've got a mini and you're not sure how easy it's gonna to be to paint, especially if you haven't ordered it yet and there's still room to make some adjustments, throw the share link down in the comments. I will give your mini a grade. And if there's any little tips I can give small adjustments, then I will throw those out there. Cause one tiny little tweak of an arm or some gear might make all the difference when it comes to how difficult it's gonna be to make your mini look real great. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell if you want more of these tips, check out all of our other stuff, check us out on Twitch, and until next time, keep chasing that rainbow.